Tatmanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gaurav Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So reading from Srimad Gita Upanishad translation and commentary is Divine Grace Shri Lesa Bhakti Vedanta Goswami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada Chapter 12 Devotional Service Text Number 5 Please uh, repeat Klesho Klesho Dikataras Tesham Avyaktas Shakta Avyaktas Shakta Sorry Avyakta Shakta Chaitasam Avyakta He Gatir Dukam They have a beer of a piete clay show de caratara station of yukta shakta chaitasam of yukta he get here do come they have his beer of a piete clay show de caratara station Avyakta shakta chaitasam Avyakta he got a do come They have a beer of a piete Clay show the caratara station Avyakta shakta chaitasam Avyakta he got a do they have a sorry they have a beer of apyate okay go ahead Avyakta Shakta Chaitasam Dupam Deha Bhavya Avapyate Deha Bhavya Avapyate Deha They have a beer of a piete. Clay show the caratara station. Of yuk to talk to say to some. Of yuk to he get here do come. They have a beer of a piete. Please repeat, Clay Shaha. Trouble. Adhika Tara. Very much. Tesham. Of them. Avyakta. To the unmanifested. Ashakta. Attached. Chaitasam. Of those whose minds. Avyakta. Towards the unmanifested. He. Certainly. Gati. Progress. Do come. With trouble. They have a beer. By the embodied. A vapyate. Is achieved. Translation Srila Prabhupada. For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested in personal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline, 
It's very, always difficult for those who are embodied. Please repeat. For those whose mind are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme. Advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. The group of transcendentalists who follow the path of inconceivable, unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme Lord are called Jnana Yogis. And persons who are in full Krishna consciousness engaged in devotional service to the Lord are called Bhakti Yogis. Now here the difference between Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga is definitely expressed. The process of Jnana Yoga, although ultimately bringing one to the same goal, is very troublesome. Whereas the path of Bhakti Yoga, the process of being in direct service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is easier and is natural for the embodied soul. The individual soul is embodied since time immemorial. It is very difficult for him to simply theoretically understand that he is not the body. Therefore, the Bhakti Yogi accepts the deity of Krishna as worshipable because he, there is some bodily conception fixed in the mind which can thus be applied. Of course, worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his form within the temple is not idol worship. There is evidence in the Vedic literature that worship may be sagun or nirgun of the Supreme possessing or not possessing attributes. Worship of the deity in the temple is sagun worship for the Lord is represented by material qualities. But the form of the Lord, though represented by material qualities, such as stone, wood, oil, paint, is not actually material. That is the absolute nature of the Supreme Lord. A crude example may be given here. We may find some mailboxes on the street, and if we post our letters in those boxes, they will naturally go to the des destination without difficulty. But any old box or any old imitation which we may find somewhere, but which is not authorized by the post office, will not do the work. Similarly, God has an authorized representation in the deity form, which is called Archivigraha. This Archivigraha is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. God will accept service through that form. The Lord is omnipotent, all-powerful, therefore by his incarnation as Archivigraha, he can accept the service of the devotee just to make it convenient for the man in conditioned life. So for a devotee there is no difficulty in approaching the Supreme immediately or di and directly, but for those who are following the impersonal way to spiritual realization, the path is difficult. They have to understand the unmanifested representation of the Supreme through such Vedic literatures as the Upanishads, and they have to learn the language, understand the non-perceptual feelings, and realize all these processes. This is not very easy for a common man. A man, uh, sorry, a person in Krishna consciousness engaged in devotional service, simply by guidance of this bona fide spiritual master, simply by offering regulative obeisances unto the deity, simply by hearing the glories of the Lord, and simply by eating the remnants of foodstuffs offered to the Lord, realizes the Supreme Personality of Godhead very easily. There is no doubt that the impersonalists are unnecessarily taking a troublesome path with the risk of not realizing the absolute truth at the ultimate end. But the personalist, without any risk, trouble or difficulty, approaches the Supreme Personality directly. A similar passage appears in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It is stated there that if one ultimately has to surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, this surrender process is called uh, bhakti, but instead takes the trouble to understand what is Brahman and what is not Brahman and spends his whole life in that way. The result is simply troublesome. 
Therefore it is advised here that one should not take up this troublesome path of self-realization because there is uncertainty in the ultimate result. A living entity is eternally an individual soul and if he wants to merge into the spiritual whole he may accomplish the realization of the eternal and knowledgeable aspects of his original nature but the blissful portion is not realized. By the grace of some devotee such a transcendentalist highly learned in the process of Gyan Yoga may come to the point of Bhakti Yoga or devotional service at that time, long practice in impersonalism also becomes a source of trouble because he cannot give up the idea. Therefore, an embodied soul is always in difficulty with the unmanifest, both at the time of practice and at the time of realization. Every living soul is partially independent and one should know for certain that this unmanifested realization is against the nature of his spiritual blissful self. One should not take up this process. For every living entity, the process of Krishna consciousness, which entails full engagement in devotional service, is the best way. If one wants to ignore this devotional service, there is a danger of turning to atheism. Thus, the process of centering attention on the unmanifested, the inconceivable, which is beyond the approach of the senses, is already expressed in this verse sorry, as already expressed in this verse, should never be encouraged at any time, especially in this age. It is not advised by Lord Krishna. So wonderful purport there by Prabhupada, especially that paragraph about the mailboxes, right? That very uh, key point to remember. Mukam karochi vatalam pangam laite girim Yet kri patam ambande shi gunund tarinam. Klesho di karatarasthe sham avyakta shapta chaitasam. Avyakta hi gati dukam deha vabbe avapyate. For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied yes so of course this is the 12th chapter which follows the 11th chapter <laughs> so the 11th chapter is the universal form how Krishna is in full control so the 12th chapter which follows the 11th chapter is how to worship that personality who manifests the universal form and that is logical so it is logical that the 12th chapter follows the 11th chapter in that way if you remember uh, the 10th chapter <laughs> which came before the 11th chapter uh, Aham sarvasya pravavo matak sarvam pravatite, right? I am the source of everything, from me everything proceeds. Iti matva bhajante mam. Thus, uh, those who know this, bhajante mam, they worship me. So the result of knowing that Krishna is the universal form, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is that you worship the Supreme Lord. Buddha, Bhava, Samanvita. Buddha means those wise people with that realization that Krishna is the source, everything has come from Krishna. Those persons that have that realization, they worship Krishna. Buddha, Samanvita means with great care and attention, with bhakti. So, um, Krishna has shown in the universal form to Arjuna that he is the cause of all causes, the source of everything. Uh, Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchidananda Vigraha, Anadir Adir Govinda, he is the uncaused cause of all causes, Anadir Adir, Sarvakarana Karana, the cause of all causes. 
He's the source of everything. But he has no source himself. So the result of realizing that is that one bhajati ma worships Krishna. So this is the science. Like uh, when Prabhupada says the science, this is what he means. That if you have this knowledge, this will have this scientific cause and effect relationship. So the cause and effect, the effect of knowing that Krishna is the source of everything is, is that you worship Krishna. So that when Prabhupada says the science of bhakti, he doesn't mean science in the material, in the modern day terms. The modern day science is uh, based on mathematics, right? Whatever science it is, it's, there's some scientific uh, mathematical question. So this is the personal science, not an impersonal science of mathematics. One and one makes two. That's impersonal. Two and two makes four. That is impersonal. So man, through empiricism, he finds himself with the universe and he looks and then he observes the planets. So he creates physics, what we have nowadays. And it's all mathematical formula. How the material u world u works. And then once he's worked out physics and astronomy, then he works out chemistry. How the individual molecules are working. And then when he's worked out chemistry, then he progresses to biology. How the chemicals are creating or how they are acting inside a living being. <coughs> and then from that living being is man. And from man comes consciousness. And so then the conscious man looks at the universe, creates physics, then creates chemistry, then creates biology, and then tries to understand his consciousness. And what is this universe? So this is the modern idea. Through an impersonal calibration of the universal elements, you can understand reality. But the science of Krishna consciousness is not impersonal. It is the pro personal principles of bhakti uh, established by the Supreme Lord and the Guru Parampara. That is the science. Just like uh, science, uh, Ato Shraddha, first you must have faith, then you will have Sadhu Sangha, then you will have Bhajana Kriya, you will follow the order of Guru, then you will have Anath and Rivriti, then you will become Nishta, then you'll get Ruchi, then you'll get Attachment, then you'll get Prey. So this is all scientific. This is the scientific. Because once you have Sadhu Sangha, you will get Bhajana Kriya. And if you do Bhajana Kriya, you will get Anath and Rivriti. So it is scientific in that way. But it is not science according to the mathematical formulas of this modern atheistic science now. Whether it's physics, chemistry, biology, it's always mathematics ultimately at the heart of it. Mathematical formula, mathematical analysis. And these things are impersonal. But actually the whole universe is resting upon the Supreme Lord. And so in the 11th chapter, previous chapter, that's what Arjuna saw. He saw directly that it's not resting on the demigods, it's not resting on scientific material principles, chemical principles. Everything is resting on the Supreme Lord. So that is uh, the realization that will bring you to bhakti. We are educated now in the modern context that there was a big bang and the chemicals they got together created consciousness and then the conscious animals developed into birds, insects, fish, so on and so forth. And there's no real purpose to it. But in the spiritual science, 
we realize everything rests upon the Supreme Lord and this material creation is an opportunity to realize that Supreme Lord. Hmm? So that desire to realize the Supreme Lord will come when we realize that the Supreme Lord is the source of everything. So the universal form, the overriding, uh, Arjuna saw all the demigods, he saw the effect of karma, he saw all the armies going into the teeth and being bashed, and he saw everything happening in the material world, he saw the result of the battle, and, but he saw how everything is resting upon Krishna, everything all scientific principles, all the demigods, all the controllers, karma, everything ultimately is on Krishna. So once that is understood, uh, then there's naturally an attraction. So this twelfth chapter is all the different ways, different levels to worship Krishna. But, before you get down to worshipping Krishna, one point is, got out of the way first. Arjuna inquired, this is first sloka, which are considered to be more perfect, those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service, or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested. Right? So, Krishna and Arjuna, in their conversation, are getting the impersonal put to the side. And Krishna is making the point, particularly in today's sloka, he's particularly making the point that um, the impersonal path is not recommended. But it is not totally discarded, even in the Bhagavatam, you know, when there is talk, the teachings of Lord Rishabdev, there's that Mahatsevam Dwaram Ahor Vimuktes, very famous sloka. The service to the Mahatma is the Dwaram, the um, gate to liberation. And then in that sloka, Prabhupada translates, um, such Mahatma, great souls, uh, can be impersonalists or devotees. So this impersonalism, uh, two types, one is Brahmavadi, where they are worshipping and meditating upon the impersonal absolute as an aspect of the Supreme. But then there is Mayavadi, which thinks, which is a different interpretation so that Mayavadi thinks there is no personality of Godhead. That the Absolute is the highest. The Brahmavadi may be open to the idea that the personal aspect is higher. At the beginning of the Bhagavatam it explains Brahmati, Paramatmati, Bhagavaniti, Subjite. That the Absolute Truth is manifest in three phases. The Supreme Person, the Impersonal Absolute and Paramatma. But Arjuna has already seen, and we, and you're all devotees, you know already, that the impersonal and the Paramatma, they are also coming from Bhagavan, from Krishna. But the Mayavadi says no. All personal attributes, all variegatedness is illusory. Uh, Jagat Mitya, uh, Brahma Satya that only the inconceivable, unmanifested Brahman is truth, and all this variety and personality, this is illusion. It is to be rejected. So the Brahmavadi though says, no, this is all the energy of Krishna, and ultimately as the energy of Krishna, ultimately it is Krishna. Just in the same way that the sunlight is ultimately non-different from the sun. So that is a different approach. So the impersonalist who is a Brahmavadi, 
like the four Kumaras when they met um, Jai and Vijay, right? And they, by Jai and Vijay, they stopped the four Kumaras and they caused a lot of trouble. So this is, uh, the, at this point, the four Kumaras are said to be Brahmavadis. But when they saw the form of Vishnu who came and s smelt the tulsi and the sandalwood on Vishnu's lotus feet, they became attracted to the personal aspect. So the Brahmavadi can easily go to the personal aspect. But the Mayavadi, because of his uh, mistaken knowledge, he may become fixed in impersonalism. So that is dis, uh, disregarded here. Krishna is telling Arjuna, yes, you can worship the impersonal, but it's not recommended. And it is very difficult. And Krishna gives the reason here. To make progress in that discipline is always, always difficult, not sometimes difficult, for those who are embodied. Why? Because, yes, there is an absolute, there is a Brahman in the Ishupanishad. Haranmayena patrena satyasya paitan mukam. O Lord, please remove your glaring golden effulgence so that I can see your form of bliss. So, yes, the Brahman effulgence, the Brahma Jyoti from Krishna and Krishna's expansions and his Shakti. Uh, that is very attractive, but the devotee doesn't want to see just that impersonal feature, he wants to see the form. So, because we are embodied in this material form, this material body, then it is very easiest to progress into bhakti, because we worship the personal Lord. Huh? We worship Radha and Krishna, Balaram, Gornitai, and we are people, so we know that we have needs. We like to take nice foodstuffs. We need to take rest. We like to have Sangha. We like to read interesting information. We like to wear clothes. So instead of worshipping ourselves in this material way, selfish way, uh, making ourselves the universe, it's very easy to transpose that onto Krishna. Ah, Krishna, the Supreme Absolute Truth, is uh, embodied, so he needs foodstuff. He needs clothing. He needs rest. He needs shelter. So because we're practiced in doing this for our children or our friends or whatever, it's very easy to do the same things for Krishna. And progress is very simple. And that is approaching this highest aspect in a very simple way. However, point made here, and uh, Prabhupada expands in the purport, that if you don't take to this natural and easily understandable worship of the person, embodied Supreme Lord, if you like, but that is also, we should know at this point, we should always remember, uh, Krishna is very clear, Vyakti Vyakti Mahasana Manush, those who have a poor fund of knowledge think that I have assumed this form and per personality. That is a Mayavadi idea. They think that the Brahman interacts with the material energy and creates Krishna and creates Vishnu, and creates Narayan, and creates Durga. It's an interaction between the impersonal Brahman and the three modes of material nature. For example, when the Brahman interacts with the mode of goodness, creates uh, Surya Narayan. When he inter the Brahman interacts with Tamagun, uh, this creates Lord Shiva, so on and so forth. This is the uh, source of Pancha Upashana. Beyond the five deities, or, and also beyond all the material creation, there is the Brahman. So, 
that conception is incorrect. And so it is artificial. And because we are trying to conceive, Krishna says the inconceivable. But we're trying to meditate upon the Supreme. But that means we're trying to conceive the Supreme. But you're trying to conceive the inconceivable. That's a very difficult and contradictory activity, is it not? It's like you're trying to buy India, but you only have enough uh, rupees to buy a seat on a rickshaw. Right? You're trying to conceive of all India, but you can only conceive of the rickshaw. So they, they're trying to conceive of some, the unlimitedly unpowerful Brahman, uh, how they can conceive of it. It's inconceivable by definition. So it's very troublesome. And also the goal is temporary. So not only is it an artificial uh, aspiration to merge into the Brahman, and as Prabhupada says, you may develop knowledge uh, or, and the sat aspect, the sat and chit, but the blissful portion, if you remember, the anand portion of your soul will not awaken. So it is an artificial, a lower goal. It is troublesome because it is inconceivable and you're trying to conceive of it. And uh, the tendency is that because you're cultivating impersonal ideas, when the time progresses for you to go from impersonal Brahman realization to the form of Krishna, it may be difficult because you've spent all your time conceiving this impersonal energy. And because that energy is impersonal, and you are personal, you will naturally, even subconsciously, start to think I'm superior. Right? Because you as a person, you have energy, you control energy. So the person is above the energy. The energy is impersonal. The sun is above the sunlight. So a person is above that person's energy. So if you are just fixed on the energy, as everything with a poor fund of knowledge and mistaken knowledge you may uh, find it hard to go to the personalist idea and then because also uh, you may even fall down to atheism because you've rejected the personal you become bored with the impersonal because there's no rasa the blissful portion as Prabhupada said you're not getting any rasa so you may go back to materialistic, atheistic p p pursuits to get your enjoyment. So the whole thing is um, anatha, unwanted. So at this section of the Gita, at the beginning of the 12th chapter, uh, there's discussion in this chapter of the difficult, uh, sorry, different ways to serve Krishna, different levels. Right at the beginning, Krishna is saying, okay, you can follow that path, but it's troublesome and it may lead to atheism and it's a waste of time ultimately. Whereas the proposal to worship Krishna as a person is very natural and it is the ultimate goal. Even though it seems uh, very uh, simple, and this was one of the things uh, Prakashananda said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right? Mahaprabhu, the Mayavadis, and they called him. He said, "Look, you're a very handsome young man. You should be studying Vedanta Sutra, not dancing like a sentimentalist in Kirtan. You should be studying Vedanta Sutra, and if you perform austerities and." Uh, study Vedanta, then you can gain Vairag from Gyan. This is also another aspect of science. If you get knowledge, you will become detached. The sign of a knowledgeable person is that he's detached from Maya. 
So Prakashananda said, look, uh, you should study Vedanta, we'll help you. And don't, and you can realize the Brahman. So then Lord Chaitanya manifest in some small portion the Brahman effulgence. He said, you are telling me to realize the Brahman, but I must inform you that I am the source of that Brahman. I am Supreme Bhagavan. And the impersonal energy is my Shakti, which is acting in various ways. So, of course, the personal aspect is supreme, but the Mayavadi sannyasis who think you should, you have to perform sadhana, and you have to study Vedanta, and Prabhupada says you may have to go through all these psychological studies and this and that. But the Bhakta, he gets one Giriraj, one Radha Krishna, Gorni Thai at home, and he cooks some breakfast, and he offers to Krishna and he takes that prasad. He's making uh, progress by the grace of Krishna. The impersonalist, he's not getting the personal reciprocation, the personal grace of Krishna, but he's reciprocating with the impersonal energy. So he's not getting the grace which is attached to the personal aspect. So here, Krishna is dispelling that attachment to impersonalism and warning Arjuna and warning us in this way. Don't become attached to the impersonal. Uh, it's a lesser goal to merge into the Brahman and it's not uh, natural. And it is less potent. And this is because people may think, uh, like the Mayavadis, with poor fund of knowledge, that, oh, that is for the women and the grihastas, you know, worshipping in the temple and chanting. They're sentimental about their wife and children. So they need to do sentimental things like dancing and chanting and having prashad. Whereas we're the real spiritualists, you know, eating chickpeas and studying Vedanta Sutra eight hours a day. And they have four. They have four sadhanas, the, um, the Mayavadis. One is karma, attached to karma. That means that's in the previous verse. Such persons being equally disposed everywhere, such engaged in the welfare of all, at, at last achieve me. So that is one sadhana of the Mayavadis that they should act for the good of humanity. So therefore they sometimes open hospitals and uh, schools. You should engage welfare. So that's their karma yoga sadhana. Then you have the gyan yoga sadhana of the impersonalists, and that is Prakashananda. Read the Vedanta Sutra, particularly the commentary of Shankaracharya and try to understand how everything is based on the impersonal Brahman and meditate on that. So that co from that is the Gyan Sadhana and it goes next into the Astanga Sadhana where they actually meditate on that inconceivable Supreme, the energy, and they try to realize the Brahman uh, and then merge into the Brahman. So they're going from doing welfare work to gathering uh, Vedantic knowledge to meditation. Uh, and then the fourth is called Hari Toshin. Hari means Supreme Lord, but Toshina means to please. So the, in their form of bhakti, Prabhupada calls it cheating, they imagine and they worship the Guru even and they worship Krishna, but they think eventually, when my worship is perfect, I will become Krishna. You understand? And I don't need the Guru then. The Guru is like some uh, ladder that I kick away. Once I get upstairs, I kick the Guru away and I become God. They think that I'll practice Jan, Dharana and Samadhi. So in their meditational system, 
they jhan means contemplation they contemplate this inconceivable energy and they try to understand it's got no variety nirvisesh nirgun no quality uh, so it's very, it's all negative so they have this nati nati not this not that and they can carry on so what what is that brahman and they okay i have an idea it's energy it's light so then dharana jyan dharana means their contemplation is fixed and continuous and then samadhi number 8 of astanga and then they believe okay i've realized to some extent the brahman now i will enter into the brahman and become one with the brahman huh they call it advaita siddhi a uh, non dual perfection so that is their path that when they say i've become god we talked about this a couple of weeks ago what they really mean is i've united my consciousness with the inconceivable unlimited brahman but of course it's all imagination <laughs> because if they've united their consciousness with the unlimited brahman then they should be able to access information from the all pervasive brahman but they don't even know uh what is going on behind their head 6 inches what to speak of being all pervasive in their knowledge and consciousness so anyway it is a mistaken false philosophy but the devotee he goes straight to bhakti and the goal of bhakti is the pleasure of krishna i was just listening to a lecture of prapad the other day and he said in all prahlad maharaj's prayers prahlad maharaj doesn't ask for one thing for himself he just glorifies and if and then i was thinking also similarly in the brahma samhita there is many many stutis prayers but lord brahma doesn't ask for anything so prapad uh nadanam nadanam nasandaram the devotee doesn't ask for anything he just wants he anything material he wants just service let me serve you lord so the path of bhakti is natural and spontaneous and the living entity in conditioned life he may be rebellious at the beginning and think no i'd rather worship the brahman i don't want to worship god I uh, I am God. I he may have these illusory ideas. But as he becomes purified then his nitya siddha krishna prem nitya siddha is with it's eternally established in the heart. Once that awakens then he becomes comfortably and naturally situated in being a devotee. You understand? he become he sits in the temple and sees the deity uh with sneha with affection naturally he doesn't think why is he getting the worship the brahman is superior i am brahman and he, all this but his consciousness becomes purified and in the purified natural condition this uh, nitya siddha krishna prem sarakobanai it awakens how shravanadi sudachitte karideoda become purified by navada nava vida bhakti shravanam kirtanam vishnu and then the natural condition so at the beginning of the period of sadhana it's very easy because we worship krishna as a person and we know how to look after people and then it's natural at the end because the natural state is that we are the personal servants of the supreme lord so therefore krishna is making it very clear now okay arjuna you've seen the universal form and you uh are you know and your main realization if you like the primary realization is everything is resting upon the supreme lord and everything that you can say the vishnu aspect and everything has come from the supreme lord the creational aspect 
and everything is under the control of the Supreme Lord. So I've realized that. Now how do I worship? Do I worship the Brahman behind, behind the universal form? Or do I worship the Supreme Person behind the universal form? So that question is there. Of course, Arjuna is a devotee. So when he sees the universal form, he says, put that aside. Let me see your two-handed form. Uh, so that is the natural condition. And Arjuna can relate to the personal form. So in the period of sadhana at the beginning, we worship Krishna as a person. And in the accomplished stage, the mature stage, we relate to Krishna as a person. So bhakti is the beginning and the end. It's all this, the goal of bhakti and the practice of bhakti is the same. Abhideya, the practice means to please Krishna. And the goal is to please Krishna. So there's no difference between the practice and the goal. So um, we'll finish on this point because, uh, and ask for questions. And the main point here in this section, before Krishna um, explains about bhakti, he is putting the impersonal sadhana and the impersonal philosophy in its place and not recommending it. And then, it's very interesting, if you look at the next sloka, uh, Krishna is going to talk about the different levels of bhakti. He says, first, the, the, the people who fix their mind without deviation, they're the highest. But then it's very interesting, just, he says, but at the beginning of this explanation of bhakti, Krishna says very, at the beginning, the key point of bhakti, uh, those who worship me, giving all their activities unto me, and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional service, always meditating upon me, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Pritha, for them I am the deliverer, swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. So, this is also the aspect that makes Krish, uh, bhakti very easy is that the Mayavadi and the Yogi and the Brahmavadi they are relying on their own knowledge and renunciation and sense control they have the sense that I am the doer and they try to make progress in that way on the basis of their own effort and study whereas the Bhakti Yogi realizes that Krishna is this deliverer he's the ultimate and everybody else the demigods uh, the sadhus the bhaktas the guru parampara they're the helpers in Krishna is ultimately Mukunda he is the supreme controller so the establishment what has happened now in the middle chapters Krishna the supreme lord has been established without question as the goal and the highest aspect of the absolute truth yes there is Paramatma there is Bhagavan but they ultimately rest on Bhagavan and the approach to Bhagavan is natural in the period of sadhana and it is natural in the period of maturity so um, before you plant like a farmer, before he plants, say, gyong, wheat, he pulls up the weeds. So Arjuna here, with Krishna, he is showing that this impersonalism, it is a weed, it is an arthur. Don't go down that. It's troublesome in the practice. The goal of it is not good. And it may lead to atheism because of impersonalism. Plus, you're going to be doing it with the conception, I'm the doer. Uh, and Rishikesha, Rishikena, Sevana, Bhakti, Uchide. So, serving Krishna's senses is Bhakti. Uh, <coughs> so, we'll finish on that point.
Any question? Everything so nicely is difficult. Difficult to understand. <laughs> well, thank you very much for those encouraging words. But it is quite simple. That's the whole. That's really the whole point. You've brought up a good point. He says it's troublesome. Krishna says that path in personalism is troublesome. And I remember before I uh, met, I read Prabhupada's Gita. I was interested in yoga, so I used to go to the library and order many, many books. And they were all about impersonalism and, you know, Mayavadi ideas and yogis doing mystical things. But when you read Prabhupada's Gita, all that stuff is not there. It's just very practical. Krishna is a person and you worship Krishna as a person and that's your eternal occupation. So it's very simple, right? It's so simple that it can be, we can say, ah, well, that's, uh, never mind that. Uh, I want to be a yogi and, and, you know, perform austerities in a cave and merge with the Brahman. And <laughs> but that is not the path. That is not the best path either. So you have the microphone? Yes, yeah. Ah. Oh, one interesting point, just to finish at one point that, just like, this is important point and very esoteric and very good to remember. Just like I was explaining how the Mayavadis, they meditate on the Brahman and then they try to merge into the Brahman, Advaita Siddhi, they try to become one with the Brahman. So the devotees, they also do smaranam. So what is their smaranam? Uh, in particularly, Lord Brahma, in the Brahma Samhita, he explains that we should meditate on Radha Krishna within the lotus of the heart, being worshipped by the Lakshmis, by the gopis. And Lord Chaitanya, the six Goswamis, if you read Jaiva Dharma and their intimate um, books about sadhana, they say that the devotee should also meditate. But what should he meditate upon? He should meditate upon Prem. You know the Bij Mantra? Klim. Klim. So this is the Bij Mantra. By meditating upon Klim, this awakens Krishna Prem. And then there are meditations given by Goswamis, Lord Chaitanya, that you should meditate upon the, the prem between Radha and Krishna. And then that will awaken your prem. Just like if you meditate on the Brahman and you try to enter your consciousness into the Brahman, you may. You. And therefore, these impersonal yogis, sometimes they get mystic power and they can control their devotees and in some small way. So the devotee, he meditates on the prem between Radha and Krishna. This is the sadhana given by the six Goswamis. The loving affairs between Radha and Krishna, that is the... Uh, gift of the six Goswamis, Rupa Raghunath, to reveal these intimate aspects. So the devotee is meant to meditate on the Leela, but also the moods, the rasa, exchanged between Radha and Krishna and their devotees. And then just like the Mayavadi merges into, or he gets some communion with the Brahman because the Brahman is there, the effulgence. 
So the devotees, by meditating upon that aspect of the Supreme, it awakens his ecstatic praying. Do you understand? Because Shravanadi Sudha Chitta Kuride Udai, it means hearing and chanting the Nam, Guna, uh, Nam Rupa Guna Leela of the Supreme Lord. So the highest aspect of the Leela is the exchange of rasa. Therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam, Vyasadeva wasn't satisfied. Narada Muni said, You have to write a literature that explains the rasa, the leela, the preem between the Supreme Lord and his various devotees. And then the bhaktas, the devotees, they will study the Srimad Bhagavatam, and by this study, Shravanadi said, they will develop a realization of that rasa. And then as they realize that rasa, they will become qualified to enter into that rasa. Because the path of bhakti, the end point of bhakti, is to become qualified to enter into the leela of Krishna. So you might say, how do you do that? Well, by realization. It's as simple as that. Huh? When you realize the leela, and realizing the leela is not just to know what happens. Like without knowledge, without sadhana, you may read the Ras Leela. And you may think, oh, it's uh, Krishna enjoying dancing with beautiful girls, right? But if you have knowledge and sadhana and Guru Parampara, then you realize this is a transcendental Leela. And this is coming from the platform of transcendence. And then if you meditate in that way, then you realize transcendence. And then you become qualified to go there. Do you understand? So that's how you transfer from the material world to the spiritual world. In this material world, we're like I was looking today, there's puppies on the street. So they can't walk properly, you know, they kind of walk, they're learning to walk. And then they realize the street, how to live on the street. So then they transform from being puppies into dogs controlling this part of the street, right? So they realize, they're born without knowledge, but then they realize the street and they enter into the street. So in bhakti, it's the same process. We come to Prabhupada, we come to bhakti, we don't, uh, especially Prabhupada went to the West, nobody knew anything. Uh, uh, but then he told, gave us Krishna book, he gave us instruction, and by realizing Krishna, then you go to Krishna. You understand? So by sadhana, the purpose of sadhana is to realize the spiritual world directly. You see, just like the Mayavadi can directly touch Brahman, so the devotee can actually touch. And the medium is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So Guru Parampara, spiritual knowledge, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, chanting Hare Krishna. Step by step, the devotee naturally realizes Krishna. And then in the next sloka, right at the beginning of the discussion about bhakti, Krishna says, I am the deliverer. Don't worry, I will take you. And remember in the Prabhupada, uh, in the purport, Prabhupada said, the devotee relies on Krishna to take him. He just does his sadhana, looks after Krishna tries to realize Krishna, and he relies on Krishna, you see. So this is the simple and natural path, you see. You can teach to a child, right? Here is Giriraj. Every day you bring some fruit and give to Giriraj. Five-year-old child can understand it. Three-year-old child can understand it, correct? There's no mystery. But you try and tell the child, perform austerities, meditate on the Brahman, 
inconceivable, without quality. The five-year-old child, what will he say? No, I want to uh, worship Krishna. <laughs> huh? Yes. So you see, Mayavad or Brahmavad, it's spiritual life without God, if you like. You can understand it in that way. The, the people don't want the material enjoyment. They're frustrated. So they want spiritual life. But they're not attached to the Supreme Lord, so then they think, oh, I'll become God, or I'll use the Brahman to get power and energy. Right? Yes? So you were saying that you meditate on the brain. Huh? Meditate on the brain. Yes. And the brain is really well, this is the Goswami. Yes. That's the highest aspect. There's also devotees that have an attraction to Lord Ramchandra. Yes. Some other devotee may be attracted to Vishnu. And when they are pure, they also have praying. So generally we think praying, Radha and Krishna, praying Mandir, Radha. But there's also other aspects of praying that wouldn't necessarily be on that level of Radha and Krishna worship. It could be Lakshmi Narayan. It could be Lord Ramchandra and Sita and the, that particular Lima. Yes, but they can all worship Lord Chaitanya and follow Bhakti. And therefore, you know, in the Chaitanya Bhagavat, the Mahaprakash Leela, for 21 hours, um, Lord Chaitanya sat on the Singhasana uh, Lord Chaitanya sat on the Singhasana and for the Ram Bhaktas he displayed his position as Ram for uh, Murari Gupta Hanuman right? he manifested um, Ram Chandra and in this way for all the different devotees he manifested the, those aspects of his personality so Yes, uh, every soul has a particular relationship with Krishna. And isn't there another, isn't there another danger? Some devotees feel, well, I've been chanting for so many years, and now I must be pretty advanced. So, although I read about Ras Lila in the Krishna book, well, there's other books that have many more intimate pastimes by, you know, Krishna Karnamrita or the Govinda, right? So they were intimate person. So let me go there. Is that authorized? Well, I was talking about this with Makanda Dutta. You know, on the 28th, we were sitting together, you know, taking Prashad. We were discussing this, and he was, he made a very good point, quoting from Shastra, that um, it is a matter of qualification. Your sadhana and your spiritual practice, I'm saying something very high level, meditating on the praying between Radha and Krishna. Uh, but the qualification, your particular sadhana, your particular practice, should be in accordance with your spiritual development. Therefore, for a bhakta, uh, he should learn slokas, he should chant, he should intensely, you know, do sadhana. He may not be qualified to meditate on the most intimate aspects. Therefore, the supervision of a spiritual master, a shiksha guru, a teacher, is essential. And that guru can then give the applicable suitable practice for the disciple. But I'm saying that in the light of that that is the ultimate goal given by Lord Chaitanya, the realization of Radha and Krishna. Just like in the discussion with Ramananda Roy, so Lord Chaitanya comes to that verse, Stane Shruti Katan, Tanuva, you know, whatever position you are in you should hear. But then 
he goes a bit further and further. And Lord Chaitanya, he comes to Prema Vichitta, which is the transformations of Prem between Radha and Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya puts his hand on his mouth, on Ramananda's roar, saying, don't go any further. Uh, this. So, if we study that conversation, you will see that there are different meditations higher and higher. We should know about them, they're in the scripture, but we should practice in accordance with our adhikar, our qualification. And so we should consult with our fellow devotees what is a suitable sadhana. But we should know everything. Just like a doctor, he's studying, um, he's studying about the heart. He wants to become a heart specialist. So he knows that at the highest level you can change the heart. He's a heart specialist and he can even take one heart and put it in another person. But he doesn't do that at the beginning. He has to go step by step. So um, it's very important to know everything, to know the final goal, but to know your own qualification. And Prabhupada says, um, on this particular point, he says that if you meditate on the loving affairs between Radha and Krishna, but you become materially agitated, seeing them as mundane sensuality, or it stimulates within you uh, thoughts of mundane sensuality, then you should stop. Understand? So all those considerations are there. Okay. Go ahead. So my point was was way before this second part of the class. So, but to to summarize, one should not presume that one is automatically qualified just by the number of years one has practiced. And to get back to the point that this Prabhu was making about 20 minutes ago, Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is so simple that you might miss it. So we can go up all the way up, you know, we have to establish our relationship with Krishna, obviously, and realize the goal. But at the beginning, <laughs> it's, better, it's better to take the humble point state and just practice the sadhana and, and understand that we can, we can rise to the occasion when the occasion presents itself. Well, yeah, it becomes natural, you see, because it is the natural process. You see, if you, if you read Krishna book more and more, then your qualification will increase and you'll see more, right? You'll see more in the Krishna book. Just like if you learn music, the more and more you learn music, the more you see in music, you understand? If you're a good musician, then you can hear the music more deeply. So naturally that occurs as you play music. So similarly, as you study about Krishna, then naturally your realization becomes deeper. So in that sense it's natural. So therefore Acharyas at the same time though, they put a warning about the intimate aspects of Radha Krishna Leela and said, um, be qualified and uh, like I said that is the one idea given by Prabhupada that if you see them in a mundane way Radha and Krishna Leela then you should not go further you should hold back so my pranam to you and my pranam to Lord Krishna my question is that one is the loving relation of Rasulila between Lord Krishna and respected Radha Ji 
is the eternal bhakti. And as you said, this is the transcendent form, even also. But even this is also an eternal bhakti. My point is that one, how this bhakti can be achieved through a Sankhya Yoga, Dhyan Yoga, Sadhana Yoga, or Gyan Yoga. And further, my second question is this, all these yogas are same, uh, Gyan Yoga, Sankhya Yoga, and Dhyan Yoga. Well, is, the, uh, yeah, uh, uh, is there any differentiation between those? Ultimately, the goal is the same. The goal is eternal bhakti, like you say, to become established in an eternal devotional relationship with Krishna. The goal is the same, ultimately. And all forms of yoga are steps along that path. But in Kali Yuga, Lord Chaitanya, who's Kali Yuga avatar, he's giving the Yuga Dharma for Kali. Um, he's quoted Harinam, 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 Eva Kevalo. In Kali Yuga, the holy name, the holy name, the holy name. Kalo Nisteva, 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 Gatiyata. He says, Nisteva, Nisteva, three times. That means not by karma, not by jnana, not by astanga yoga, but by bhakti in Kali Yuga. And bhakti in Kali Yuga um, is centered around the sadhana of sankirtan, japa, individual chanting, and chanting collectively. So in Kali Yuga, if people practice the holy name, and at the same time the Srimad Bhagavatam describing the relationships, the rasa between Krishna and his devotees, so if somebody chants, studies the Bhagavatam, then that is the perfect spiritual path for Kali Yuga. Uh, my Lord Krishna is such a really wonderful person and has a great, it is a great personality and further uh, he is so loving and he is also Kripalu to everybody. So can we have just uh, by recitation this Hare Ram, Hare Krishna, so one can have a total bhakti towards yes. just like uh, Radha ji and Krishna ji? Yes. yes. Yeah, is there some other also some source like Yang Yoga or Sankhya Yoga or Dhyan Well, like yoga? I say, the effects of all the other yogas, the positive aspects, the benefits are contained within the Holy Name. It is explained in the scripture that um, the Holy Name um, is especially empowered in Kali Yuga. There's a special power in the Bhagavatam and in the Hare Krishna Mantra. These are specially empowered. Yes, one may do different practices, there's no doubt, they can be helpful. But the central and most powerful practice is the chanting of the Holy Name in the association of devotees. And to gather knowledge of the transcendental world through the Srimad Bhagavatam in the line of the six Goswamis. Uh, demigods are the uh, manifestations or extensions of Lord Krishna. If one worship demigods like Surya Devata, Chandra Devata, Agni Devata, and he put his services as a total devotion to Lord Krishna, then it will directly attach with the Lord Krishna. Well, it's explained that the demigods are like the limbs of Krishna. Uh, the universal form, that the eyes are like Surya Narayana, and the different potencies that the demigods control, they are the extensions of Krishna. So we can give all great respect to the demigods as the agents of Krishna. Just like we worship the devotees with great respect, we worship Srila Prabhupada. But we worship Srila Prabhupada as the assistant as the agent, as the helper of the Supreme Lord. We don't worship Srila Prabhupada in his samadhi here as the Supreme Lord. So similarly, we can respect and worship in their own way the demigods as the assistants of the Supreme Lord. But in the Gita, Krishna says, um, 